What's wrong, Ted? What do you want to talk about? Zombies or something? Ah, no zombies. No zombies. Okay, whatever you say, man, Ted. Anything but zombies. Hey, Nerdarchist Dave here. Four nerds by nerds hanging out with... Nerdarchist Ted. Welcome to Nerdarchy, a place for news, views, and homebrews for 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons, as well as other role-playing games. Don't forget to crit hit that subscribe button and attune to that notification bell. All right, we're going to do another edition of Don't Use This Monster, Use That Monster Instead. This time, we're chucking zombies out the window, and we're going to figure out something else to use. But before we can really do that, we have to really define, you know, the role of that monster and... What is the zombie's place in a D&D game? Absolutely. Z zombies are one of those staples that, you know, DMs, movies, TV shows have used for years and years. And it's got to it's got to mean something. Why do people people keep going back to it as this, you know, story element, as this adversary? So it really boils down to what does a zombie represent in the story, in the mechanics? So let's dive into it. Okay. So first of all, we have to differentiate, I think, a little bit because there's been two different versions of the zombie in, in you know, the horror genre. Absolutely. You know, there's the slow moving... The shamble. Shambler, <laughs> yeah. Zombie brains, you know. And then, you know, later on introduced was the more of a sci-fi, quick moving, uh, kind of feral type zombie. And D&D &D is kind of has kind of gone with the traditional zombie. Every once in a while, you'll find someone that, you know, homebrews, or you find this other thing that adapts the more, you know, feral, the fast zombie. But today we're really looking at the monster manual, the slow moving, the shambling, brain eating zombie. So the thing about zombies is by themselves, they're not really that much of a threat. They're not particularly fast. They can't get to you easily. You can outpace them. But there's a couple problems. One, zombies, they're strong. They don't need to eat or sleep, although do they do crave human brains. <laughs> Everyone knows that. You know, so that just makes them kind of like implacable foes. They're mindless and they're inexhaustible. So therefore, eventually, you're going to need to sleep. So you, you, they're just going to pursue you endlessly. Traditionally, you don't encounter just one zombie. <laughs> Or, you know, it's usually a horde, so it's like, oh, you stop one, you stop two, you stop ten, but they just keep coming. And also, traditionally, in horror movies, uh, people that are killed by zombies tend to then rise as zombies themselves. That may not be a D&D &D thing, right. but it is interesting, as, and as a GM... You could definitely do that in your game if you're using zombies. Absolutely. So that, that you know, really boils down to, you know, th those themes. They're mindless. They can be slow. Uh, you know, they're going to follow whatever commands that, you know, they have been given by the thing that raised them or the thing that created them. And, you know, really, is there anything else? I think, I think it's important to note, too, that zombies kind of... Um, they raise up this visceral feeling of horror and dread because they used to be people. Maybe even they used to be people that you knew. You're looking at this this threat, but like that's your mom or your brother or your loved one. And, you know, you know how you kill zombies. You got to blow their heads off. <laughs> Who wants to blow mom's head off? Right. So they're a very scary monster for those reasons, because they just they, they, they raise up these like primal fears in us. All right, so now that we've boiled down what a zombie is, what's next? What's next is actually looking at the monster kind of mechanically. Uh, and the easiest way to do that is through the challenge system for 5e D&D. All right, so we know that the basic zombie is pretty pretty weak when it comes to like what the challenge system is. Yeah, they're, they range from a quarter, your ye old zombie, all the way up to an eighth, and I think that might be a T-Rex zombie. <laughs> yeah, so so you have lots of wiggle room and things to work with. Now we were kind of like workshopping this video and going, man, what do you what do you want to do? And like, you know, what would we replace a zombie with in your game? What's gonna have kind of fill that same need and role? And I think we kind of like came up with the same thing. Uh, pretty much right from moment one of like, we're not gonna use zombies. My brain was like, well, I need something that's mindless. And when I look at that, there's two things that immediately jumped to me. And that's plants 
and constructs. So before we dive into more in depth in regards to the plants and the constructs and why they're great, we should thank our sponsor, Deck of Many. They're an awesome company and they got, currently have a promo code coming on just for the holidays, SHIP20. If you happen to be in North America, that's gonna be free shipping for your orders placed on their website. So go check it out, Deck of Many, awesome. Yeah, kick off the holidays, right? Also, you know, they have 5e reference cards, which you'll probably find some plants, some zombies, and some constructs in their monster decks as well. So go check them out. So, as I said, constructs, plants, mindless automatons, they're going to follow the instructions. You know, there's ways to get the horror elements. There's ways to get some of those other zombie-esque feelings and thoughts built into those kind of creatures. To me, it was a perfect, it was a no-brainer go-to for replacing zombies. Now, by no means did it have anything to do with plants versus zombies. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know, so I, I kind of look at constructs and I look at plants as being very alien and foreign and being behind, you know, beyond the ken of mortal uh, minds. Yeah, and also you can they can easily replace zombies in the sense they could fill the same roles for whatever reason, you know, things are becoming animated and attacking the village or the town or killing people. There doesn't even have to be a driving force behind it per se. Yeah, so if you are, you know, walking through, you know, a, a forest or anywhere that there's going to be plants, you know, the the things that you expect to just be natural all of a sudden moving and attacking you grabbing out at you pulling you in into you know their uh earthen embrace if you will it's gonna be horrifying it's gonna it's gonna add those elements of you know oh crap you know the the, the jump the panic moments that you might expect from you know the the zombie-esque feeling uh when the the statues when um you know the thing steps out of the wall when the rug kind of Gr tries to grapple you again those shock moments they're still gonna be there uh and and that, that i think that is an easy you know replacement for zombies yeah one of the things we did is when we were looking at the different monster monsters or it was easy enough to pull up on dnd beyond and check out so we literally found 26 different options ranging from a quarter to cr8 or challenge eight you know, for dnd monsters and so that's a ton, right? And a, a bunch of them at the lower. Blights, blights make great low level encounter villains. They easily, you know, will fill the place of zombies. And also you can do it in kind of a, a different way, right? Where, you know, the zombie horde is there, you see it, you're trying to escape it, or, you know, maybe you can't escape it, it's in a circle, G. you're kind of like digging in. Well, I kind of look at like the blights in a different way, right? You could be trying to escape something in the forest, but it's then the forest itself is attacking you. You know, the, you know, the vine blights are kind of like falling down out of trees. Other blights are just stepping out of the underbrush or they are the underbrush, you know, and they're grabbing and pulling at you. Night of the Evil Dead kind of comes to mind a little bit, the very first one. So, yeah, you, and like you could use the monsters how they are in the books, or you can tweak them a little bit. This could just be a evil supernatural event that's happening in a haunted forest. Yeah, I mean, you 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 take those things that are already you know kind of neutral or evil esque, and you dial up their evil meter of like, no, you're in our play, you're in our land, you're in our territory, and we don't want you here. You know, you could you could just dial up that that horror theme and be like, all right, well, as opposed to you know, these these plant creatures really, um, you know, just having uh, like typical plant juices and stuff in them, you know, maybe it, it, they, similar to zombies, you know, they feed on life. So they, they've got, they literally bleed when you attack them. Like you could go in a variety of different directions with that. Yeah, I mean, you, uh, plants you can be associated with thorns very easily. And, you know, maybe they're wrapping tendrils and vines around their victims and the, the, the thorns are getting embedded in the flesh and, and they're just sucking the blood out, you know, out of their victims, almost like vampires. So very much you could do that. Like they crave the life force of the living and that's how they take it. Well, in, in nature, we already have carnivorous plants, you know, the man trap, the fly eater, you know, these, these things are, are out there. So if you were to 
dial those up, escalate them into a D and D monster, and oh, you know, you you step into this this clearing, and you know the ground is covered in this weird, uh, you know, weird green layer that you don't quite understand, and before you know it, as you you know lean down to smell this beautiful fragrant flower, the thing closes on you. Oh crap! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that just makes me think. You're like, how do how do these things even catch flies? What fly is that stupid? And then you see, you know, I can see like a comic strip doing the same thing. And then the, you know, the warrior is like leaning down to smell the fly and the the fly trap pff, on be, them. Be more comical if it was the druid. Uh, yeah, that would be good. <laughs> that's what you get, hippie. So, and, and that's just one way of doing it. And you can you can do it however you want. Evil influences, dark druids. Uh, you know, it you know it could be wild magic. You know, it might not actually be evil at all. It's just a random thing that has happened. You could do this. You know, you could do this in a reserve or a park inside of a, a city or a town, uh, a noble's uh, estate where maybe he he has or she has a bunch of um, topiary and stuff like that that starts coming to life. So there's a, tons of different ways you can do it. Now looking at constructs. Uh, again, constructs is it's very easy to use all the same tropes you would for the plants. Now, w with constructs, as I you know I kind of mentioned earlier, you've you've got that idea where like there's a lot of uh, monsters in, that are constructs in the monster manual that have that you know natural camouflage that you have no idea that it's something beyond a statue or a normal element until it moves. So your animated armor, your rug of smothering, gargoyles, all of these are constructs that until it begins to move, there is no mechanics to allow you to identify it for anything other than a you know man-made object. It, that kind of makes me like think of this, just because they're kind of foreign and alien in the sense that they're just a thing, right, until they move and, and you have no way of identifying that. Uh, plants, zombies, and constructs have this one thing in, in common, and that is they're emotionless, right? They don't convey any emotions, so that's just going to, like, add to that alienness, that creepiness. They just kind of, like, do what they do, and there's no, it's just cold and calculating, and there's, like, just nothing there. You know, and, and you do see some of that, you know, in, in movies and in novels, you know, where it's like, okay, you know, I'm going to get you... And I really don't care about it. It's like, man, that's that's kind of cold and heartless. But as you said, there's no emotion behind it. It's I'm going to follow these orders. I'm going to do what I've been told. And I'm not going to think about the, re the repercussions of those actions. Now, some some plants are a bit smarter than zombies. That is true. Um, and Which then, is why plants beat the zombies in Plants vs. Zombies. Is it how it works? You have constructs that kind of run the gambit, right? So they have absolutely mindless, all they do is follow programming pretty much up until they actually have their own minds and can think for themselves. So you play with that a lot of different ways. It could be, you know, you could have a construct mastermind that is orchestrating everything. Or you could have a wizard that's created all these constructs and are using them. You could have a wizard that has created this stuff, but his long since is gone. He's left, dead, whatever. We, we don't actually know. And the constructs are just following whatever order they had last, whatever their programming was. You know, maybe, you know, maybe it is to repel invaders and destroy invaders. And to them, everything is an invader, <laughs> right? Because they don't have any more programming. Or maybe it's a supernatural force that is just animating regular stuff. These, there's nothing magical about these suits of armor or these swords that are flying off the shelves. It just so happens uh, that this force has animated everything and now they kind of have an evil will. Maybe they themselves aren't intelligent, but there's this, this driving being. Yeah, I mean, if you really wanted to, to kind of dive into, you know, the horror aspect, similar to the where zombies come from, you know, Fifth edition has really kind of taken a step towards Cthulhu with the Great Old One, uh, it, with Warlock. You know, you could really have this kind of outside outsider force that is kind of creeping through into this locale, this mansion, and all of these objects that would normally have just been a created thing or have all been bolstered and are following the commands of this, you know, evil outside force. Absolutely. Also, I would like to mention, since we mentioned it for plants, 
there are like 20 options for constructs as well, with a bunch of them being a quarter CR. Like you have a fl you have flying swords that are a quarter CRs, and then CR1 is the animated armor. And let me tell you, animated armors, uh, if your players are having bad luck with dice rolls, they can wreck house on a party. <laughs> Yeah, they, they can be they can be tough for a low level party. So there's tons of options whether you go with plants or constructs. Both of them make excellent alternatives to to zombies specifically. So you know normally we just give you the one option. This time we decided to double down. Uh, you know, go ahead, push the zombies aside. There's plenty of options, more options with plants and constructs over the zombies. And you can always play with it a little bit and. Play on that zombie trope and your and maybe even your players expecting zombies and then pull the switcheroo. Use constructs or use plants instead. You know, the you know, because the lead up to it, you could definitely have it so they, they feel like something else was going on, and then you can have your aha, your big reveal. Uh, before we head on out of here, once one thing we want to do is we want to thank all of our patrons. Because without them, this wouldn't be possible. Also, maybe you would want to consider hanging out with us over on Patreon, where we're making stuff, making content for 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons. We make stuff in these videos all the time. Well, our Patreon is actually where we're creating that stuff and putting in the products for you guys and gals out there who want to add it to your games. Or you can wait until it goes live on the Nerdarchy store. But the patrons, they're going to get it early and they're going to get it for less. Not only that, there are some playtesting options and more options for hanging out with Nerdarchy, including coaching, if you so desire. With that, let us know what you think about replacing zombies with constructs or plants. We've got a place where we can talk about that. That's down in the comments below. While you're at it, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. After you do that, don't, don't forget to check the description and the link to Decameni in that promo code. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.